In the tunnel. In the tunnel. In the tunnel. You're listening to In the Tunnel. Welcome to In the Tunnel, episode number 37. Uh, we took a little bit longer of a break than I guess both of us expected, but we're back. Grad school project, man. They're, they just kept coming at me this semester. Finally, semester is over, and I was hoping that I'd have a few weeks in between semesters. Well, good news, I have a week. So... <laughs> Hopefully, we'll get the next episode to you sooner. I'm not making any promises at this point, but we'll try. Yeah, for me, it was work, but hey. Yeah. That's not going away anytime soon. Yeah, nope. Nothing like uh, remembering how many years left of that we have. (laughs) Oh, boy. Yeah, I thought about it the other day. It's like we've only been in work life for like three years now. Mm-hmm. And we're still in our 20s and think about how likely we're not retiring. Well, if you're in my position financially with the way that I've started until the sick until age 60s. That's a long way to go, especially down here in the south where the pay just is. Uh, crap. Eh. Yeah, I mean, I don't like it's definitely in the upper 50s. And six uh, into the sixties for any of us, most likely. So, not, not a, um sitting at like half the sixties. So, I mean, oh, you're talking about uh, age to retire. Yeah, I thought you were talking like tens of thousands of dollars. No, no, no. I need a nap. <laughs> uh, well, like, you can get one after this episode, but oh, we'll see. Too bad we're doing an episode right now, so. We're going to jump straight into it and talk the NHL playoffs. All right, so I guess let's just kick it off. Uh, Columbus won 4-0 against the uh, Lightning. Uh, So rip everybody's playoff brackets. Uh, We're not sorry because our son too. And the wheel. And the wheel. The wheel deserves to die. (laughs) Not really, but mm, kind of, sort of. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, the wheel decided to do favorites a little bit this time, and it failed. Yeah, well, who is the, who were the two idiots that made the probabilities for that wheel? <laughs> that thing. Wow, did we get that shit wrong. Woo. Hey, uh, anyway, so rip everybody's playoff bracket. I think there's like zero people who could win if they entered the first time. Yeah, it's very much like March Madness, except not Sean. Eh. Um. Aside from that, uh, sorry to say the I well, sorry for Jeremy, but the Islanders swept the Penguins. But yeah, no one feels bad. That gets glossed Disney. over because of the Columbus sweep of the Lightning. So I guess you have a little bit of reprieve. I mean, technically, we were not the first team to lose. You were not the first team to lose out of the playoffs. You are correct. Yes, because uh, Tampa lost uh, with like 12, 13 minutes left in the... Uh, yep. Yeah. Yep, yep. In yep. Uh, game four. Which, I mean, to tell you the truth, honestly, I was... By game three, I was like... Because I knew going into game three... If they lost game three, game four, with how unusual a reverse sweep is, that game four is basically a funeral for the season, which is just like, I mean, the odds are so stacked against coming back that coincidentally enough, I was so out of it by game four that, I mean, 
I did a group text to my kickball team and completely forgot about that game four happening that night. And I initiated with the team to get together and to have like a practice. <laughs> and it wasn't until like the plans were made. And I was like, oh, right. There's a Penguins game tomorrow night. And I ended up missing like the first period. My dad texted me. He was like, cancel scored 35 seconds in. And then like I got a text 14 minutes later and it was tied. Oh, okay. And then I turned on the radio as I go in the car. I was like, well, I got nothing to lose by listening. And as soon as I turned on the radio, Eberly, or not Eberly, but, uh, you know, someone else on the Islanders goes, okay. Uh, same pattern. But they did not play defense at all in that series. And this the team that won back-to-back cups is not the same roster as it is now. I understand that. But there's at the time, it was like I thought there was enough leadership. There was enough know-how to get it done to – still make a run and the fact of the matter is they're just not playing the way that was successful for them in those years i mean uh but they don't i mean some players are that's not their forte but to not play to their strengths is just that you can't win like that and they certainly weren't stopping I mean, the Islanders from playing their game you had like was it like sid and malkin were very low on points for a playoff series yeah and you can't have that they are the leaders right i mean i'm not saying they have to score all your points but like they need to be in there there was years where they've made deeper runs where one of them was kind of yeah. had it going and the other one was flat yeah but that's years fine. where they both kind of like produced at like not a superstar rate but like a normal productive right. Players but rate. when both superstars are not producing even at like some normalcy, there's well, Sean, a problem. They couldn't hold on to the puck. Like nobody on the Penguins, and I get that. Like Nassau Coliseum, it's a bit of an older stadium. The ice may not be great there because they weren't expecting on you know playing uh, hockey in that building this year. But they came home. They still couldn't pass the puck to each other, and you know without, like, it hopping off their blade and then the Islanders. And, and honestly, I'm getting really tired of the Harlem Globe Trotter style hockey that the Penguins do. It's like, they get on the power play, and it's like, why don't you begin the offensive zone? Why don't you show you this little, I can pass between the legs, I can pass, you know, behind my back. It's like, yeah, great. Get a fucking puck, you know, like, pucks on the net and like let's like generate some opportunities i don't give a shit about this passing for 45 seconds straight it really is pissing me off because they didn't win championships or even get to like conference finals doing the shit that they do where it's like they'd rather be pretty and think that winning pretty is the answer it it doesn't win though so i'm getting kind of sick and tired of this i'm just Look, the quickest way from A to B is A to B. It's not A to this, to that, to that, and that, and that, and that, and that, and then B. Just be simple. Play the fundamentals, which ironically was what the Islanders were doing, and they swept them. So they deserve to win. Yeah, I mean, so those are the only two series anyway, finished on the East. Uh, Coincidentally, the 1-8 on the West, the Avalanche also won that one uh but they won 4-1 and then the blues took the jets 4-2 um so congratulations for history where both one seeds like overall get knocked out by wc2 uh good job guys (laughs) huh is it wc2 a tax form (laughs) the eight seed anyway um the rest of the series are pretty damn close like you have one series that uh, and also canada's last hope going in uh toronto maple leaves are three three uh with the bruins so nothing matters aside from the next game this is really weird i feel like 
the Canadians kind of won the playoffs for Canadian teams by just not making it because <laughs> they they didn't have to lose a series in such a, sh- you know, on the shorter end of games, like four or five games. They just kind of like Yo, you accepted don't think, defeat right at the end. You, you don't think they could have replaced the Blue Jackets and swept the Lightning? Um, yes. <laughs> I, I'll take a firm pass on that one. Yeah, of course I, not. I mean, Although I didn't think that the Dallas Stars would be up on the Predators right now, and they are. So yeah, Go I mean, what's going- I don't understand the playoffs anymore. But that's what's great about hockey is you can literally be like, "Here's the Winnipeg Jets. They made the conference final last year, and then they lose to the Blues this year. And the Blues were like trash in the first part of the season, so." Yep. That's the beautiful thing about hockey is the unpredictability of it. And uh, that's that's the ride that you have to go on. Right. And uh, the other series are all 3-2. Washington takes uh, the lead on the Hurricanes. Vegas has the lead on the Sharks. And as Jeremy mentioned, Dallas has the lead on the Predators. But at least those have been like close series. We don't have like blowout. Like, series-wise. Yeah. Must be nice. <laughs> Let me just sit here and reminisce of what that would feel like. <laughs> to be in a series where the team wins a game and doesn't look like absolute crap. <laughs> I bet they play defense, too, and don't leave their goaltender out to dry. Uh, You would think that, won't you? I would think that. But then again, I'm a moron. All right. Anyway, anything to say on the rest of the team? Have fun. Because, oh, and I don't want the Bruins to win. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> you Boston don't want Canada got... just to, like, lose all hope in the first round? Look, Boston already got their championship this year. If they, like, win all the championships, then it's going to, like, piss me off. Because hockey is really the only sport where Pittsburgh gets to, like, have that rivalry with the Boston team where it's like, you know, I can root against them because it's like the Patriots have now won so many Super Bowls where it's like, I don't really care anymore. They they already have the six rings, too. I mean, basketball, it's like, I mean, there's no... NBA team out there. I can't, you know, there's no rivalry there. Baseball, the Red Sox have like a hundred times the payroll and they actually spend money on players. There's uh, no yeah. rivalry I there. I don't think I you mean, have much to talk about with the how the Pirates spend their money and how the team plays. I'll let you know when they spend money on more than Lonnie fucking Chisnall. All right. Well, I mean, hopefully the Maple Leafs at least put up a fight as they are, again, the last hope. Yeah, it's a weird boat for me to be in, in the territory of, you know, hoping that Canada can seal a deal for me, but <laughs> here we are. And uh, it's not the last time we'll even be talking Canada stuff tonight. Yeah. All right. So moving on. So uh, among things that happened while we were away was the uh, – draft lottery for the nhl and uh i guess even though the two new york the other two new york teams don't make it for the first time they go one two in the lottery so devils have the first pick and the rangers have the second pick what do you think of that jeremy Whatever makes you happy, Sean. I've known you for a long time and hey at least the devils won something I mean, it's a win by losing, but, you know, (laughs) knock yourself out. I just want to, you know, there's not enough times in the world where I see you smile. And, uh, you know, given that we are now not in the same room again anymore, I feel that uh, any time that the world can bring a smile to your face as you're on your eight-hour commute from New Jersey to New York in the morning, you know, it's a win in my book. (laughs) Um, I'm I'm very sure that you're going to... Use it wisely. I mean, the 
projected number one, and I really don't see that changing, is Jack Hughes. And he's a phenomenal he player. Is but... he the next uh, so-and-so? Yeah, he seems like he'll be a, a phenomenal player. But, I mean, even down like the first six, seven picks, there's great players in this draft. And nice. uh, let's uh, not forget to mention the Blackhawks did get the third pick. Uh, I think they jumped all the way from 12 or something like that. Because yeah, they almost made the playoffs. Yeah, and then uh, the Avalanche, who <laughs> did make the playoffs, get the fourth pick. They yeah, had the, the best Senators, chance to get the first another pick. Another Canadian team loses. Yeah, because they got it from the Senators. But the Avalanche did was, have uh, the best chance to win the first pick. Yeah, that was the Duchesne trade. Yep. So that and, one really uh, came back to uh, pay dividends. Yeah, and the Kings round out the top five. Nothing much there. Yeah, maybe they'll get their next Koval Chuck. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, again, I think even though Jack Hughes is the number one, so the Devils are most definitely picking this guy, kid, two to, like, six or seven is still amazing. Even some of the picks after that are NHL-ready. That's great. I mean, it's one of those things I'd pay more attention to if the uh, team I followed wasn't trading away the first riders every year. Yeah, but the team you follow is making the playoffs every year. So that justifies not having a first round pick every year. No, but I mean, if like, I mean, you guys almost three peated, right? Lost in the second round. Yeah, close enough. Sure, Sean. Two and a <laughs> half peat. All right. Why anyway, three peat when you can two and a half peat. <laughs> I I didn't say that one. Yes, you did. Nope. You definitely implied it. Nope. Uh. Anyway, uh, let's go, I guess, to basketball? Sure. All right. So here are the playoffs. None, none of the series have, or wait, one of the yes. series have finished? Yes. Okay. That happened today. Okay. So aside from that, uh, we've both agreed to be Nets fans, right? Yeah. Uh, it's not looking so more good for, for them, but I mean, more I'm, for nostalgic reasons than anything. But yeah, it's not looking so good though. But hey, they uh, won a game. No, so that's I'm more enjoying than it. You could I'm expect. enjoying it. They have a player that's literally like trying to fight Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid. So I'm enjoying the ride. It's okay. A team that wasn't supposed to be there either. Yeah. So I mean, it, it's pretty good. Um. So the only series to finish is the Celtics one, right? The 4-5, which is kind of surprising. No, it's not really surprising. Eh. You expect a game to go the other way, at least. You're four, the 4-5, four it's supposed to be close. Or I mean, than the rest of them. I think the Pacers have, like, the lead in every game at halftime. Yep, probably. And they still lost. Yep, probably. But no, it's, it's because uh, the Oladipo thing. The Pacers started out so good with Oladipo in there, and then he got hurt in January, and you know you start to teeter a little bit, and then yep, you balance out at the end, but you get a matchup yep. against a team that's like finally healthy. Yeah, that's good. Uh, any of these other scores uh, or series surprise you so far? Uh, the Rockets Jazz series doesn't really surprise me, just because. The Rockets being in the four spot is like the prize only in itself. Because, I mean, who would have thought that a team that you hear about nonstop is actually only the four seed? Um, that being said, this Denver San Antonio thing's got me surprised that it's as close as it is. Yeah, I, I would agree with that one. I think that the tempos of play are much different. Uh, I think Denver is uh, probably a quicker pace team than San Antonio, but yes, San Antonio just has won. You know, they. I think Denver tied up the series last night, but for San Antonio to have the lead in it early on was definitely a little surprising. Um, 
And actually, in that series, the fact that they took game one was good enough. Like I said, yeah. they probably shouldn't have been in the playoffs this year. But um, I don't know. For me, do you I think, think it's surprising that don't... the Clippers took a game? Um, yes and no, because. It's not the Warriors team that only lost like nine games in a season. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it does surprise me that they gave up like a 31 point comeback, which is how the Clippers won that game. Yeah, that's so, why I brought it up. I don't know. I think that, you know, the way that towns work in today's NBAs. Every team has the athleticism on their roster to get it done, but talent and their ability of that talent. In other words, consistency is the main, you know, outlier. And I don't, I didn't see that kind of consistency coming, I guess. True, true. Uh, otherwise, I'm not really that surprised. Like, I was more surprised that the Magic took a game. Fair enough. Uh, I mean, it looks like they're going to lose tonight's game because it's still going on as we are recording. Well, what's the score? It's like... Uh, 94, 75. Uh, yeah, Six and a half true. minutes left. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, like, again, I'm... I'm happy that the Nets won a game. I was surprised that it was the first game. Um, and a like, couple of the games have been fairly decent. It's not like they've been completely blown out by like 25, 30 points all the games that they lost. No, and last game was uh, decided in the last 10 seconds. So Yeah. On some uh, bad refereeing. Eh. I mean, it was a foul that was not called. Yeah. I mean, but, like, one foul shouldn't change the entire dynamic of the game for you. There's still other things you could have done better or differently to win that game. I guess it comes down to time, though. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. But, I mean, I still think that you have to look at the whole game and say, hey, we could have done this and that would have gotten us our two points or changed the dynamic of the game in this way, too. Mm -hmm. Maybe a pregame nap. <laughs> you look you look and sound like you need it, dude. I woke up way too many times this night. Oh, oh, fun. Yep. So anyway, uh predictions for like later or who do you think's gonna win the uh, NBA playoffs? I think it's the Bucks to lose in the East. Not just because they're in one seed, I just think that they have the better roster. Okay. Um, and I think if Denver can win this series, I think that I like Denver as an upset pick to go pretty far at least to the conference finals. But uh, I just reality is telling me that that won't happen. Fair enough. Um, and I should have done this on the last slide. But what about the with the upsets that have happened in the NHL? What do you think? For the finals at this point, Canada sucks. Um, it, uh, hockey, yeah. Um, <laughs> let's see. Um, well, there yeah. goes all of our Canadian viewers. Yeah, I'm sure there's like one. Um, I'd say that it's definitely not the Blue Jackets in the final. All right. I... Um, do you think the Avalanche or the Blue Jackets can uh, get another round win? I think they can get another round. I don't think that they can go much further. But if um, they win round two, they're in the semis, and that's like... <laughs> that's pretty damn close for being the eight seed. Well, I don't see them in the finals. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty damn close for being the eight seed, though. Yeah, but the thing is, is now in today's NHL, there's no such thing as an eight seed. Yeah. True, well, true. It, it, you know, pro sport upsets don't really surprise me 
because they were still, you know, pros. Uh, you know, there's a level of, there's a cutoff level to okay. those who do and don't make it in caliber wise, except for in lopsided years of either the NHL or NBA, everybody has a chance. Um, Fair so, enough. I mean, I can see, like, I don't see Dallas going past the second round. I think if Dallas wins their matchup against Nashville, that one, I think Dallas stops there. St. Louis, which makes it weirder because St. Louis, I also don't know that I would in my right mind see them going further because it's just you never know when the inconsistency starts to sink in for them. Okay. Because historically, that's what happens. I think Vegas probably takes out the Avalanche. I think whoever is playing Columbus, whether it be Boston or Toronto, takes them out. Okay. Um, I feel like the Islanders probably have another series in them, though. Yeah, I think the Islanders will take... I mean, the winner of the uh, Washington series isn't even defined yet. Because... They've been like the Hurricanes have been blown out, yet they've won twice. Like, what the heck? Yeah. It so I, but I do think the Islanders have. It's, it's a hard one to gauge, but it all comes down to who wins the series. Yes, in the next series. So I mean, we're looking at probably at a pretty, pretty nice playoffs. Yeah. I'm I'm up for seeing how it goes. I've actually still been watching playoff hockey, which is uh, interesting given that the team I report is now out, but it's still fun to watch. Yeah. That's a good thing. All right. It is. So you want to bring us into our next segment? Uh, sure. So when we were in uh, Pittsburgh, we did the first segment of the – Stupid stuff you can buy um, in your town. So we did Pittsburgh while we were there. And now, per Sean's I, I suggestion, we have decided that we were going to do Toronto just to do a playoff team, which ironically I think we decided while one of the Maple Leafs games were on. And I think we didn't really like, talk about how the inspiration came to be, but... I think we both were watching it, and it was just kind of like, because I was thinking Toronto too, and we yeah. just kind of like, it was the first one to say it. Yeah, I figured it'd be fun to do a playoff team, especially because they're in the playoffs in both NBA and NHL for now. <laughs> no. Yeah. All right. So why don't you get oh. the ball rolling? All right. So this is, uh, I mean. Toronto made it harder for me than Pittsburgh did because <laughs> Toronto is in any Canadian city, province, whatever, can make it harder for you because hockey is so popular there that you can't just pull out like this oh fictional, you know, hockey jersey from a movie thing. It was like up there it makes sense to do that. Mm-hmm. Like, that's a factory of hockey talent. Um, so, you can't really do that. In the NFL and NBA stuff, it's like all, like, Hall of Famers or current All-Stars or Raptors players. It, it made sense. So, it took a lot of scrolling through, and the talent pool for stupid stuff may not be as strong as the last segment, but here we go. Uh, someone is selling the uh, a lot of 25 size small balance bracelets with the Maple Leafs logo on it. So you can get 25 bracelets for 35 or $38. This is I Canadian. Guess. Yeah, well, I mean. So, I mean, tell, I don't know what you're going to do with 30 or 25 size small bracelets. But I'm guessing this is the surplus or the unsellable, 
or unsellable merchandise that was left over from some store because they're all a size small. I'm guessing the medium larges and whatever uh, were gone in this dude was like, well, you know, gotta make room for stock is stock. Um, And so, yeah. But also, I don't really understand why you need a bounce bracelet with the Maple Leafs logo on it. Seems to me that if there was a team that was the least balanced in terms of consistency, it's probably the Maple Leafs, uh, at least for hockey, from going from such lows to highs to missing. Actually, the Oilers would probably be better <laughs> to represent this example. Yeah. Uh, or the Flames, now that you think about it, because the Flames kind of have been like way down, then pop up, and then way down again. Um Canadians, pretty much any team but the Maple Leafs. This would be a great idea, I guess. All right. I'm backtracking, but speaking of tracking, how about an $80 track suit that's, again, Maple Leafs uh, themed, and it splits your body into two different colors because you look so fresh and fly when you can't decide which color to wear and you look like... the I mean, it just shows how indecisive you can be, I guess. I would, honestly, not, be, I, I would not want to wear that thing running. Honestly, I'm okay with the jacket. Because if it's a zip jacket, that's kind of okay. Yeah. But once you get to the pants, uh-uh. <laughs> when your pants are two different colors, that's not a fashion statement. That's a cry for help. Like, <laughs> this person needs someone to tell him, like... I, that person who's modeling it probably needs some of the tie issues. Um, because, like, it, you gotta just pick a, a, a color when it comes to the paint. You can't go two colors. And also, the uh, amount of words on each sleeve of those pants is just... I mean, also, like, the, like, the way you split the colors, like, going two colors is not bad. It's just that you split it directly down the middle straight. You know, it's if you split it vertically instead of horizontally. No, like, that, if you did, like, a diagonal. Uh, I mean, I think vertically where it's, like, slash, you know, so, uh, you know, from the chest down would be better than, you know, horizontally. Um, but, yeah, but I would not be caught running in those pants. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not a good look. But And for $80, I can see why it's on the market. <laughs> someone would have to lower that price significantly. Um, yeah, it's not great. It, it kind of looks like, you know, when uh, you see the football jersey or someone was like, uh, they split it between the home and the away jersey down the middle. It looks like that, but, you know, in yeah, a like sweater. every year in London. Yeah, and it, it, I mean, in London it makes sense. But if it's your local team, no. Because in London, you, you, you fetch attention with that because it's like, oh, there's a story there. Yeah. It's like, this guy watches the NFL. I wonder why. <laughs> but this is... uh. Hello. All right, moving on to your twenty-five Canadian dollar Brady Quinn jersey from the Browns. I actually what? didn't think that. I thought that Brady Quinn was going to have a better career than he did. Uh, I didn't think he was given a lot of, you know, enough of a chance in the NFL. That being said, I don't know why there's a Brady Quinn jersey in Canada. It doesn't really make. I mean, it would make more sense to have a, a Manzel CFL jersey than it would a Brady Quinn Browns jersey. Yeah, but I just looked at that. This is the world we live in, and I was like, "What the heck?" <laughs> this is the world we live in. Brady Quinn. All right. Well, twenty-five dollars. Hey, hey, I mean, he had a fan because I mean, this guy's selling it, so he's no longer a fan. Yeah. Well. No, he'll have two fans if someone buys it, though. Well, had one and gained one, right? So. Well, I mean, he could still be a fan, but you just have to clean up some space in the closet. All right. All right, so moving on to the next three? Yeah, no, it's the next two, but the last one had 
it was so like oh. I don't understand it that I had to put up both uh, the front and back of it. So okay. the knee saver, which I'm guessing is some kind of knee pad. Yeah. If you're selling it on Facebook Marketplace, I doubt it saved your knee. Well, I mean, it's right there in the name, Sean. But that's not the point. The point is, if you look closely at it, this stuff looks like it's been sitting in a garage for like 25 years. Yeah. I mean, it's like crinkly fabric. It looks crusty and full of dirt. It, which, like, as you said, this is definitely used knee pads or something. It, um, it's not going to save your knees today. Yeah, no. It was made, um, probably great marketing plan back in the eighties, but for the I don't understand why someone's selling this for thirteen dollars now. That seems like this is like a you get rid of it for free or throw it in the trash thing. Yep. So yeah. Save your knees when you're falling down on them because yeah, the flames lost. All right. I don't know. I'm not making great jokes tonight, but we'll power through here. All right, last one. Yeah, so for the CFLs, uh, not a Johnny Manziel jersey, but uh, – and you'll understand why uh, I have this on here because this was one of the few times that there was a jersey up on Toronto's Facebook Marketplace. Well, I have no idea who this is. <laughs> I have no idea who Moss is, M A A S, but. Okay, we have someone who left a comment saying us where Canada is. That's fun. Um, so, yeah, got it. Um, no, but this is a CFL jersey that, I mean, $32 for I I feel like this was a custom jersey. No, it's actual person. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, there goes my guess. CFL All-Star in 2001, it looks like. So, oh, well. he did play for the Tiger Cats. Ooh, very fan. Wait, in 2001? Mm, I don't know when, but he did. No. When was he an All Star? In well, he was an All Star in two thousand one. Okay, so this is a long time to wait for the selling point. Like it's not a peak value. Yeah, I mean, it shows in the price though. It's been listed for over a week, and you're in Toronto. Like that's a pretty hopping place. Yeah, I, I can understand that. Sorry, I, I'm yeah. I I just don't understand. It was uh, seventeen, eighteen years since this guy was a all star. He played for the his Tiger only. Cats in two thousand six, two thousand seven. Okay, so that makes having the jersey all the more questionable. Five years separated from his peak. Um, yeah. Yeah, okay, that's fine. That one. So, yeah, that, that's pretty much where we are. Excuse me for a minute while I... Um... You do what now? Uh, I was trying to kick someone out of this uh, chat on the Twitch stream. All right, anyway, like, anything else you want to touch out while we're here? Not really. I think um, that's all I really have to say on that. All right. I mean, so those are pretty, some pretty cool things that, or weird things that came out, like a knee saver, like, again, mm -hmm. don't recommend. It probably ain't saving your knees. Uh, Go buy some 2019 knee pads please yeah 
Yeah. Especially if you're from Alabama with a banjo on your dick. <laughs> yeah, anyway. So, sorry. We, we got to this one late. Thanks for tuning in. And next week, we'll definitely try to hit out another episode later this week. Yep. Sounds good.